the myth that cancer is contagious is a very common myth. So we know that cancer is caused by genetic changes. Certain infections can increase the risk of cancer. Hello everyone, welcome to Misconception. Today with me we have Dr. Tomaso, an oncologist at Clinical Hospital Singapore. Our topic today is is cancer contagious especially cancer that is caused by virus we will put the question directly to the expert but if you are new here my name is dr tony stiobudi an orthopedic surgeon at mon elizabeth hospital singapore don't forget to subscribe and activate the notification button i will share more medical information and we directly ask the experts to clarify Hi Thomas, how are you today? Hi, I'm good. Uh, some cancers are related to viral infection, such as hepatitis causing liver cancer and human papilloma virus causing cervical cancer. In this kind of situation, is cancer contagious? So let me clarify, cancer itself is not contagious. Cancer is uncontrolled growth of cells in a person's body. It is a normal cell that has gone bad. So it is actually unique to that person. When a person's cancer cell is transplanted to another person, whether or not it's a normal cell or whether or not it's a cancer cell, it will be regarded by another person as a foreign and there will be a reaction to reject or attack that. The myth that cancer is contagious is a very common myth. Yeah, It probably arose because people have observed patterns among family members or within a certain community right, of people. Now we understand cancer better, so we know that cancer is caused by genetic changes. As you correctly pointed out, certain infections can increase the risk of cancer, mm -hmm. right? such as hepatitis virus, yep. H. pylori, human papilloma virus, and HIV. Now, these are all infectious and can be passed from one person to another. So, the virus is infectious, but the cancer that is caused by the virus is not infectious. That's right, Tony. Okay, you mentioned some infections that can cause cancer. Can these infections be treated? So if we are able to identify some of these infections, we can actually treat the infections. For example, hepatitis C can be treated and eradicated uh, successfully now. Um, H. pylori, which causes stomach cancers and certain lymphomas, can be identified through endoscopy, can be identified through a blowing test, and they can be treated with antibiotics. What about HIV? Can it be cured? So HIV treatment nowadays has improved tremendously over the years. With current modern antiviral treatment, the risk of cancer developing from HIV infections have decreased dramatically. Now, to push it one step further, it is also important to know that certain infections can be prevented. For okay. example, hepatitis B, as well as HPV, which causes liver cancer and cervical cancer respectively. Just now, we mentioned a few viruses that can cause cancer. As we know, with virus, there are vaccination. Can vaccination help to reduce the risk of cancer? So vaccination itself reduces the infection and definitely will reduce the incidence of cancer if that person does not even get the virus. For example, for hepatitis B, there are successful nationwide vaccination programs, including Singapore, um, and if you look at other countries' experience, such as Taiwan, for example, that started their vaccination program earlier, 
their incidence of liver cancer related to hepatitis B has also dramatically decreased over the years. <laughs> Similarly, for HPV that causes cervical cancer, uh, the HPV vaccination all right, has almost but eradicated all right, uh, cervical cancer uh, in the UK. They just published this data just uh, recently. Yeah, so it is actually the result of a successful uh, vaccination. So the cohort that received vaccination, uh, there were hardly any incidents of cervical cancer. They managed to actually prevent that. So yes, it actually works. Okay, so actually vaccination is a powerful tool to prevent viral related cancer. Yes, Tony. So some infections can cause cancer, but the cancer itself is not contagious. So do we need to avoid people with cancer? So the answer is no, actually. You are able to be in close proximity uh, with people with cancer. In fact, it's necessary to provide them with support, especially if they are undergoing the battle with cancer. This is including cancer that is related to viral infection or any other infection? That's right. For example, for the longest of time, people with HIV uh, were avoided by many people. Yeah, But we now know that it's okay to share food with them. It's okay to be in close proximity with them. Yeah, Especially if they are also undergoing treatment. Um, and so the same goes for patients with cancer. There is absolutely no need to avoid them. Okay, thank you so much, Thomas, for insightful information today. And I want to thank all the listeners for watching this video and feel free to type some comments and questions. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. And see you again in the next misconception. Bye-bye.